A typical sports drink has around 500 milligrams of sodium per litre. So if you picked up a regular Gatorade or a Powerade or a, you know, any, pretty much any of the original sports drink, they're going to have about 400, 500 milligrams of sodium per litre. Human sweat varies from about 200 to about 2,000 milligrams of sodium per litre. So we decided that we needed to put across that range as much as possible with, with products. So we did a, a product at 250. We did a product at 500, we did one at 1,000, and we did one at 1,500. And that was the original lineup that we had. We made them as effervescent tablets because we figured that was, when you're trying to do something precisely, we liked the idea of having a, a solid dosage form rather than a scoop because, you know, scoops can be accurate, but how many of us really level out and weigh every scoop that we put in, you know, and the, and the idea of being more precise was, well, we can give you a one tablet that goes in a bottle. The other thing we thought was important was that in the early days, especially we wanted to focus actually on just electrolytes and fluids and not worry about the carbohydrate intake. Because for me, I learned early on that there's this kind of, we now call it the three levers concept, but there's three things you need when you're doing an endurance event, you need carbs, you need water, and you might need sodium. Yeah. And it's the amount of those that matters. And if you put all of those things in together in one bottle, it can work for some people some of the time. But I found it way easier in, say, an Ironman race to really segregate and have majority of my bottles were just fluid electrolytes. Then I knew exactly how much fluid, exactly how much electrolyte. And then I had my carbs from something else like a gel. 